So let's talk about remesh by union. And in order to talk about union meshes, we need to talk a little bit about live booleans. And if you're new to the concept of live booleans, go to my YouTube channel, go to the ZBrush 4R8 What's New playlist, and you're going to see it's going to start out with the gizmo, new gizmo introduction, then just past that you're going to have a bunch of live boolean videos you can watch. I'll take you through the basics really quickly here. So if I go into my tool palette here, we'll grab a cube 3D, drag it out of my canvas, go into edit mode, make a poly mesh 3D out of it. So we have a 3D object here. Open up your subtool menu and uh, let's go ahead and duplicate this object out. I'm going to hit W to bring my gizmo up and we'll just drag this cube up and over in order to just kind of cut through this object just a little bit. Now right now you can see both of these objects here and everything looks normal and I'm just alt tapping these objects to select them. You can also go over here and select them in your subtool menu. Now this subtool right here, if I change that icon over here to a subtractive, nothing happens. However, if I go up here to this live boolean button right here and I turn off polyframe, you're going to see we're getting a live representation of what this would look like if we did a subtractive boolean. You're going to notice there's another icon in here that's an intersection. So this is what it would look like if we took an intersection between those two objects. If you're ever disoriented as to what your object is and how it's interacting with your object here, you can just turn on your polyframe here and you can see where this object is. And if you want to edit this object, go into solo mode. And now we can say, for example, go to BZM for your Z modeler brush. Let's go ahead and hover over an edge. We'll change it and hit space, hold down space bar. We're going to go to poly group, poly loop. We're going to change the poly group of all of these. And now if we go into our Q mesh, hover over a face, hold down space bar, go to Q mesh, poly group all, we can pull these out. And now when we go out of solo mode here and we turn off polyframe, you're going to see what we're getting is this Boolean operation now. So now that we're changing this initial mesh over here, and again, we can turn on polyframe here, and we're using this new mesh to cut through this object. And you can update this mesh as you'd like. If we go in here again and hover over a face and go Q mesh polygroup all, you can continue Q meshing this out or Q meshing this in. In fact, let's just Q mesh this in here. So we'll grab all these other polygons here and we'll Q mesh this in. And now when I go out of polyframe mode, you're going to see that's the result we're getting. So let's go ahead and undo that. We'll go back to just our regular poly mesh uh, Boolean right here. And now let's say I want to use, uh, make a union mesh out of this. So what I'm going to do is with these two both visible, we can go down here to our subtool menu underneath our tool menu. And in the sub menu here, there's a Boolean option and then there's a make Boolean mesh. If you click that, that'll go ahead and it'll leave these alone. And you can see there's a U mesh option right here. Uh, it made a new U mesh, it's a union mesh. Turn on polyframe, you're gonna see it went ahead and made a union mesh where we basically subtracted out or booleaned out a subtractive mesh of our original object. And you're gonna notice it also kept that polygroup that we made in there. So it'll maintain both your polygroups and the original topology of your mesh. Now, if you wanted to do that with a union mesh deformer, let's go ahead and go back to this option here. I'm going to take this poly mesh cube and we're going to go down here to merge and I'm going to merge down. And now both of these objects are merged into one subtool. What I'm going to do to get access to this subtool here is what I can do is I can hold down control shift. Let's hold down control shift. Let's go into select rectangle and then I'm going to grab a little piece of this object. I can do control shift A, which is visibility grow all. You're going to see the hotkey shortcut for that is grow all. And now I can hit control W and then I can hold down control shift and tap and that'll bring, that'll make this all one polygroup, which is going to make it a lot easier to select. Another option I could have done is just go to, if we hit control W, that'll make it all one polygroup again. Let's go to polygroups. Let's do auto groups. And then anything that's not vert welded will allow me to have a separate polygroup for that object. Now to select separate objects now, since they're now both separate polygroups, I can hold down control shift and just isolate this one. Now, why am I talking about polygrouping if I just want to get into union meshing? Well, in order to union mesh, what I need to do is I need to isolate this object right here. And then underneath the polygroups menu, we're going to do group as dynamesh sub, and that's going to make it white. So now that we have a white object here and I, whatever color your other original polygroup is, if we hit W, go in here and then remesh by union, you're going to see it's going to do a subtractive operation out of that. And of course you can do this with any object here. So if we go ahead and hit say control W or we can also do an auto groups here, even though these are two separate polygroups here, because none of them are grouped as Dynamesh sub, if I again go in here to W and we do remesh by union, it's just going to union or boolean those together. Let's hit undo. Let's go to BI brush insert. 
Let's go to our insert multi mesh boolean here, B I B to select that. And now we can just go up here and select any of these. And of course, if we have the gizmo turned on with W, you can swap out any of these objects here. Uh, if you hit W and you control tap this object, you can now just cycle through this one, then change it. But we'll go ahead and leave this one alone, unmask everything, hit Q to go into draw mode. Let's go ahead and select any one of these objects. I'm going to select this little power detail right here. And because it's an insert mesh brush, I can just drag it right on my object here. Now, if I want these to be a union and I want this to be subtractive, all I have to do is go ahead and push in how far I want this thing to be booleaned. Let's go ahead and control shift to isolate this, group as Dynamesh sub, unmask everything, hit W, go into my gear icon here, do remesh by union, and you're gonna see it's going to go ahead and Boolean these objects together and then cut that object out. Now the cool thing about using the deformer instead of just making a U mesh is at any time, you can undo out of that, and let's say we wanted to move this location, you can just hit to W, control tap this to mask just this object or unmask just this object. We can go ahead and scale this down, move it in. We can hold down control and drag out a copy here. Control drag to unmask, go back into our deformer here, and then try another remesh by union. So it'll go ahead and stay nice and flexible for you. Now there's one more instance where a union mesh might become handy for you. And we talked about it a little bit when we were talking about Sculptures Pro mode. So I'm going to go ahead and load up my moose head where we were using Sculptures Pro. And you're going to see I have a polygroup for his antlers here and then another polygroup for his body here. So if I hit W and then control tap his antlers, that'll go ahead and unmask his antlers. I'm going to hit Q to go back into draw mode. And I'm going to switch over to B, S, S. And then I'll grab my snake sphere brush. I'm going to turn off live boolean here. Let's go ahead and turn off polyframe as well. And now what I can do is I can actually take this mesh here and make sure you have Sculptures Pro mode turned on, of course. And now you can start pulling, or you know what, if you want to, you can do a BS, just go right to regular snake hook, whatever that, you know, we've already gone over the new snake hook functionality. So choose whatever you want. So let's say we wanted to make an attachment from our horns here all the way to our mesh. And we want these things to interpenetrate. Now the way that Sculptures Pro works is if I control drag to unmask my mesh and then I go in here and smooth, these objects are always going to be separate. If you've been to my YouTube channel and you saw me sculpting my octopus here, you're going to see I was able to keep these tentacles separate as I sculpted because Sculptures Pro isn't like Dynamesh. It's not going to merge any polygons. So you can see these tentacles are always going to be separate from the underlying ball here. Same thing with these antlers here. If I hit W and control tap these and then go back into my snake hook brush, and then move these around. You're gonna see they're always just gonna be on the surface here. I'm gonna go ahead and use the inflate brush. Go ahead and inflate this up. So they're always gonna be on the surface of my mesh. They're never gonna be connected. Even if I pull them into my mesh and unmask, I'm always gonna have a separate mesh there. However, one thing you can do is you can hit W, go into your deformer here, do a remesh by union. And now we're not doing any live Boolean stuff or any, um, like we talked about earlier, with the poly groups and then group as Dynamesh sub, we're not doing any of that. What we're basically doing is running a union mesh just so we can connect these pieces here with our object and continue to use Sculptures Pro mode. So again, go back into that gear, go remesh by union. And if you need to tap X to go out of X symmetry or go out of symmetry mode altogether, and that's under your transform activate symmetry, it turns that off. And then go back into the gear here, hit remesh by union. That's gonna run a union mesh operation on your object here. So you can go in here and say accept. And now when you look at your mesh, it's going to look the same. However, if you go through here and you hold down shift to smooth, you're going to see our sculptures mesh is now all union together. It's all stuck together, just like as if you were to use Dynamesh. Now I can, because I do have sculptures pro mode turned on, I can still go through here and separate it with sculptures pro mode if I want to. But the default behavior is going to be to stick these things together. And now I can sculptures pro right across this object here. Thank you.